Hey you guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a while since I last uploaded but I painted something that I'm really proud of and so I wanted to get back here and show you guys the full process all the way from how I prepped my paper to adding the very final touches of this painting. We will be painting photos from Alice who I follow on Instagram and I will have her account linked in the description. For the art supplies that I'm using, my paper is the Fabriano Artistical Traditional White. The brushes that I'm using is from the set that I designed with Craftamo. And finally, the paints that I used are my Schmincke watercolors and I also used gouache towards the end of the painting and those are my Holbein Traditional Gouache. So this paper is a whole full sheet roll. So after I cut out the ones that I'm going to use for this painting, you can see that the paper is still very warped from how it was rolled. And so I needed to prep this paper. And basically what we're going to do is stretch this paper out so that it doesn't warp too much when we add very wet layers on it. And also it will just help with how... Um, warped it is right now before we even got to use it so the very first thing that I did was soak it all in in the shower make sure it was dripping wet and then after that I just laid it down on this board that I have and I even made sure that the board itself was wet so that the paper can stick to it and so what I'm doing after that is basically just getting my biggest flat brush and straightening the paper out stretching it out onto the board I have seen many professional artists say that they swear by doing this every single time and that it makes a lot of difference when they're painting versus when they're using unstretched paper. But this is my first time doing it. Um, I did notice the paper feels better, but I can't put my hand on why. Maybe the water sort of affected the sizing of the paper. What this really helped me with noticeably was in straightening my paper out before I got to paint it but yes pretty simple basically just made sure this paper was stretched out flat onto my board but after I've done all that I just needed to make sure that this was fully dry before I took it out of the board and get it ready for my line work so for watercolor painting it's very important to have a very clean line work before you start and so what I did for this is I actually sketched the line work digitally on my tablet and then what I'm doing is very simply just tracing over it with my Prismacolor Very Thins. This time I used my green and purple because those are the only colors I have now. If I could choose I would use maybe a red or an orange color for this because it will blend well with the other colors, but then it will also not be very easily overpowered in those initial layers. See what I'm doing now is going over it again. Because of how the lighting was, you couldn't really see me tracing over it. So now what I'm doing is taking a slightly darker pencil and finalizing my line work before we paint. But initially I did trace it, I just couldn't really show it that much on film. So after that is all done, after my paper is prepped and my line work is done, it's now time to paint and my first brush that I'm using is the one that I used to prep to my paper. It's my bigger flat brush and I'm using this because I want to really saturate this first few layers with water and color. This is very atmospheric lighting in the photo that I wanted to get and so I really just wanted to have all my colors placed initially in this first layer but also wanted it to sort of have this soft look to it um, so the whole painting will have this look like it's glowing in the end. These are all really just yellows and some parts burnt sienna. I tried to avoid using red for this but I do think after a while I got to use red. Not for this first layer though, you can see it's mostly just yellow and a lot of water. So for the second layer, I used the same brush and the same colors, but now 
we're trying to get more contrast in there, more contrast between her and the background. So you see I'm painting her hair right here. And every time I would think to leave out these harsh lines, I would just go back and blend them out with more watery paint or just water. Because I, in a lot of my recent paintings, I was feeling really lost with watercolors. I would have this look in my head and it would always be really hard for me to get to that look in the end of my watercolor paintings. So I think a lot of it has to do with me just liking other people's watercolor paintings too much. And they just all have such different styles for me that for this one... I just didn't think about other people's styles. I just went in with how I would normally approach a painting like this. And so yeah, for this painting it's a mix of wet on dry paper, but then in most of those areas they're very blended out. There's also some wet on wet techniques on here, like I would go back into her hair and just sprinkle some color in there while the whole thing is still wet. You'll see it will spread out very beautifully. And then again for her shirt and painting fabric, so a lot of just putting wet paint over dry paper. You can see the harsher lines here are very intentional. And also, even though this is mostly detailed part of the painting, I'm still using my big flat brush. So I really take advantage of that, um, of the straighter lines that I can get and really reflect a sort of the stiffer fabric that is on her sleeve. So to start off with the background, I'm using this really dry and old color from my watercolor confections palette. And I think this is, this color is called Earth. I love this color so much. It's almost an exact match from the color that I wanted to get in Alice's photos. And so I'm using mostly that and the burnt sienna to get this darker value on the background. One a separation between her and the background now because the background is mostly um, darker than her. Also you can see here on this side the lines are harsher because because we really want this background to sort of mold her out and fill out her shape. You can still see a lot of this is very wet. We want to work with very wet colors for this. This is most at least the first visible layer for the background so this is now where we start to build up the colors for it, also working in long streaks so that we're already reflecting the shape of the trees behind her because she is in the forest for this scene. And yeah, I want to just have those shapes in to start with. So you can see this is now my third layer for her. And this is almost very scary to do because what we're doing now is mapping out the shadows on her. And for the shadows to be believable, we have to make sure that there's not that much separation from her hair and the shadows on her face. So this shadow color is actually the colors on her hair that's just continued down onto her face. So we can really build up these shadows and the lighting before we can think about separating each element of the painting. And then we're going back to her sleeve and basically the fabric of her dress. We're just now doing the same thing as the layers before but now we're adding more of the shadow to it instead of just painting the folds of her sleeve. At this point, we're almost squinting at it and we still want to get those hard wet on dry edges that we get with the wet on dry technique, especially on, on here because, because we want to make sure that the textures on her dress are completely separate from um, the ones that are on her face and her skin. So now we're going to start with the flowers that she's holding and this is the first time that I'm using green in my painting. I don't think it shows too much, but I also actually used a lot of Prussian blue for this painting, just makes um, just to get my darker values on here. For the greens on the flowers, I used actual green that I have on my palette, and yeah, just painting over the yellow tones of the bouquet. When we're moving on to the first initial details on her face, 
we're making sure that we're using really light washes of color for this even though we're using sort of a very detailed approach to the brush using the very tip of our brushes there's actually a lot of water in this paints that we're using so that when they dry they're still not too well defined because we don't want her face to stick out too much for this actually to keep the lighting as soft and light as possible we want to leave out most of her face almost blending into the rest of the painting so it's a fine line between getting the exact details of her face right but then mixing a lot of water in the paints that we're using so that when they're dry they're not too defined the kind of look that we want for this is sort of like an old photograph so using the same colors that we used for the rest of the painting and then making sure we blend out these colors with water after we've laid them down just very soft details overall for her face right now and so now what we're gonna do is go back in with our darker colors this is when i've started to mix in my paints gray with my earth and my burnt sienna just so i can really get the exact dark values that i want for the background so it really makes her glow and i went back in with my bigger flat brush so i again to reflect these sort of longer streaks of the trees behind her do try to blend it out where it touches some softer edges on her like her hair go back into that area with just water i'm expecting those colors to soften up so we can then add more layers on her and then after that it's just back and forth building up our values since our background is now darker it's now okay for us to add in more layers to her hair because we want to get the exact balance in values between these two we want them to reflect how the photos are because in the photos her hair is almost as dark as the darkest trees behind her so we want to have the shadows on her hair catch up to the shadows on the background painting the flowers was more was actually a lot easier than i thought it would be and a lot of it has to do with um, just leaving it mostly very simple and almost abstract actually is how I painted these flowers I always have trouble painting flowers and so what I'm doing right now is actually just almost just blurring the details of the flowers and I'm mostly just mapping out where the shadows are going to be hitting on it maybe adding in some reds so that there's a variety in the colors in the flowers but yeah didn't really want to add too much to the flowers at this stage of the painting so this time what I'm gonna do is build up more of the shadows on her face. I'm trying to paint around her features now and trying to map out exactly where the shadows should be. But then I'm also using a smaller flat brush for this. But then I will be blending it out later for when we go to the edges of these colors. It's more just water now so we don't get these harsh lines later on. Just really try to blend out as much of this painting as I can really and I really had a hard time before this to embrace blending on watercolors so yeah for this one I really tried to fight that urge to leave these edges raw and really tried to blend them out as much as I can where they needed to be blended out so after that's on I have now added some white gouache to the same watercolors that I'm using and I just used that to make the watercolors more opaque and I'm using it now to sort of flesh out the folds on her dress. Just some areas that I couldn't get with just the watercolors, I wanted to carve them out more. And then we will be bringing that same thing over to her face and some parts of her hair so we can see how those hair strands will look on top of the darker background. And after that, we will be adding even more of that darker values to the background because I wanted it to just all be darker than it already was. I wanted there to be less separation between the trees actually. So you can see me here just um, filling the gap between them. And also so that when I add in the details of her flowers, those details will stand out over top of 
the darker colors so you can see that's exactly what I'm doing right now going in with my detail brush and I'm mostly still using my white gouache with the the watercolors so mostly just using the white gouache to make the watercolors look more opaque you can see right here that I'm very really just randomly placing them I am still looking at the photo and trying to see where I can strategically place these lighter petals so it looks natural but also still look like flowers. I do just go back and forth between the flowers and their hair just to make sure that I'm not overthinking the details of one and that the whole painting is still balanced where I put in the details so you can see how satisfying it is to paint the hair strands right now that the background is darker you can really see those hair strands stand out and it's just so satisfying and beautiful to uh, to do and also i think to watch i really enjoy this part of the process i added in some of this lighting on her face because I really just liked the, how the light was hitting her face in just the right way for it to carve out the details of her face but not but they're still not overblown and yeah I just really, really wanted to capture that when I'm painting the details of her hair this was when I think I was the most careful even over painting her face because I didn't want these layers that I used gouache on I didn't want them to be too bright because gouache does dry a different value from when you're working with it. So you can see I tried to get the gouache to be watered down so that when it dries it mostly just blends into the rest of her hair but then I also just wanted it to at least stand out from the darker colors so yeah it was a fine balance trying to get the exact consistency of gouache that I needed and I think in the end, I got extremely lucky with the colors that I used. Even though this process is going to be cut down by a lot, I did try to not speed up any of the footage so you can really see how much time and care it took for me to paint this whole thing. And especially her hair. There were so many times while I was painting this that I would just sit and wait for the gouache to dry so I can see if it's the exact value that I needed. So after all of that is done, it's now time to fully take in the rest of my colors for gouache. This is now all mostly the same colors that I used for watercolors, just now in gouache form so that I can get them to be as opaque as I need them to be. But after this, we're really just now finalizing the details, going in on her face just to make sure she looks more like Alice. And then I'm adding in these really fine streaks of light that I'm getting on her before I move on to the background. You can see that I'm now just adding more elements to it that are outside of just the trees. It might look sometimes that it's too jarring and that's because it is just still wet right now. I'm using very watered down gouache for this so that when it dries it mostly just blends into the initial layers that we already had but yeah just making sure that there's more of a forest vibe <laughs> to the background and it's not just big um, straight shapes behind her that I'm also painting in some of the ground some of the leaves on the ground just make sure that while I'm doing that that I'm not adding too much details because they are way behind her and they're supposed to be very fuzzy so yeah that's what I'm trying to get at right now before I add in the final, final touches to this painting. So after all of that has been done, it's finally time to add in the finishing, final touches to this painting. And I'm very carefully calling it that because sometimes I overdo this stage and add too much gouache. What I told myself while I do this was that Remember that this is supposed to be a watercolor painting. The gouache is just to finish it off. I don't want the gouache to fully cover everything that I worked so hard on. And so, yeah, that's really just what I had in mind. I wanted also to add in these tiny, tiny 
details to the flowers that is just going over the darkest trees. I just added them in there to give the illusion of detail to this piece. Even though when you look at the flowers, they're really just almost abstract. There's not much to them. They just look right enough to be believable and that's all that I needed for this piece. And that will be it for this one. This is my favorite painting so far. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me paint it. I know my uploads have been taking so long, but I assure you guys that I've been filming this whole time. I've just been more selective of which ones I upload because that's my New Year's resolution is to choose quality over quantity, which isn't what I prioritized before in my channel. But yeah, I'm hoping you guys enjoyed this. Thank you so, so much to my patrons for allowing me to be selective with my YouTube uploads, for supporting me in that time. If you guys want real-time paintings and sketches, tutorials and all of that, make sure to follow me on Patreon. The link will be in the description. Thank you so much for watching this one and I will be seeing you guys again soon.